Hello, fifth graders. Today we're going to be doing illustrative math, unit five, lesson 21. We're going to multiply more decimals. All right. Central Park is a large park in Manhattan. That's in New York State. It is about 3.85 or 3 and 85 hundredths kilometers long and 79 hundredths kilometers wide. What is the area of Central Park? And they want us to estimate that area. Well, if I were going to estimate, I could estimate this to be about four, right? Three and 85 hundredths is closer to four than it is to three. So I'm going to say that's going to be about four. And I can estimate this to be about one. Now, that is going to be a little large, right? Because I went up with this number and I went up with this number too, right? But I think that um, for estimation purposes, that would be correct, okay? So too low would be something like one kilometer and too high would be something like six kilometers, right? All right, so let's see what they ask us about this problem. How did you know the area is greater than two square kilometers. Well, because um, the length is three and 85 hundredths, which even if we rounded that to three, this is closer to one than it is to zero. So three times one. So it's got to be bigger than, than um, two, right? Got to be bigger than two. How did you know the area is less than 3.2 square kilometers? Well, I did four, so I thought it was more. Hmm. I do know it's less than four, though, because this is less than four, and that's less than one. So I do believe that it would be less than four. So we could write that. The answer is going to be less than four, less than four. So I could say it's between three and four, between three and four. All right. Good estimation, ladies. Let's move on to the first activity. Explain or show why each pair of expressions is equivalent. Okay, so I see that what they're doing is taking the whole numbers and multiplying the whole numbers times each other. So they're saying that this is like 72 times 53. And then remember that this is one tenth. This has one tenth, right? So 72 times one-tenth would be seven and two-tenths, and this would be 53 times one-tenth, one-tenth, like that. So if we multiply these two numbers together, then we have one-tenth times one-tenth, which is a hundredth. So that's how I know that these two are equivalent, okay? So again, we'll do the same thing. Ah, this one says divide by 100. So that one seems weird to me, okay? So if I take 65 times 1 tenth, so let's do that over here, right? So 65 times 28, and then normally we would multiply that to times 100, right? Or we could say 65 times 28, divided by 100, because this is also written as 1 over 100, isn't it? So 1 over 100 is going to be the same as dividing by 100, because remember that, so this is 28, remember that this line means divided by. So let me write that a little bit more clearly, see if I can clarify my thinking. So I like to be clear. Okay, so I see the 65 and I see the 28, and I also see that this is going to be times one tenth times one tenth, right? And we already discussed that one tenth times one tenth is the same as one hundredth, like we did up here, right? We could also write one hundredth as one over a hundred. So if we did 65 times 28, times one hundredth as a fraction, remember that is the same as 65, and I don't even need to figure out what 65 times 28 is, divided by a hundred. So that's why this works. So I'm going to say that that is also equivalent. 
It's the same as dividing by 100. Oh, and they have that written here for you, right? We took the whole numbers. We treated this as a whole number, but it is in the hundredths place. So we're going to multiply it times 1 one hundredth. So 31 times 44, and then those are hundredths, so I have to multiply the whole thing by hundredths. Then it says we have to find the value of the products in the previous problems. So now we have to go ahead and multiply it out. So I'm going to erase my work from before, and I'm going to do this part for this problem. Okay, so 72 times 53. Make sure that's a 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Two, 3 times 7 is 21, and I'm done with that 3. Add my 0 because now I'm multiplying in the tens. 10 times, I'm sorry, 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 1 is 36. Now I can add that together. 6, 1, 8, 3. Now I'm going to multiply it by hundredths. So this is times hundredths. So it's this many hundredths, right? So that means the answer is going to be 38 and 16 hundredths. So notice that when I multiply times a hundredth, I'm just making sure that I have hundredths in the answer. I have two place values here and two place values there. All right, I can find this the same exact way, right? So I can, let me get a different colored pen here so you can see my work. So we know that this one is 38 and 16 hundredths. So now we're going to do 65 times 28. 5 times 8 is 40. Five, 8 times 6 is 48 plus 4. So 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. I'm done with that 8 and the 4. I'm going to add a 0. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 2 times 6 is 12, plus 1 is 13. I hope y'all can see that that's 2, that's 8, and that's 1. So this one's going to be 1,820 divided by 100, which just means I'm going to do the same thing I would do here. So it's going to be two place values. One hundred, or it's going to be 18 and 20 hundredths, two place values, two zeros. Right? Okay, and then the last one, I can do 31 times 44. I'm going to get a different color ink for that one. I'm going to put 44 on top. I like to have the largest number on top. So 1 times 44 is 44. I'm done with the 1. Add my 0. 30 times 4 is 20. 12 plus 1 is 13. 4, 6, and three. And then I still multiply that by a hundredth, which means two place values, tenths, hundredths. So the answer to this one would be 13 and 64 hundredths. So I think the purpose of this one is to make sure that we know that we can multiply by a, a decimal, divide by that decimal in the hundredths, right, or tens or whatever it would be. This time it's hundredths. Or we can multiply it by the fraction, and we'll still get the same answer as if we were doing um, decimals. Okay, let's see what they ask us next. Why is 7 and 2 tenths times 5 and 3 tenths equivalent to 72 times 53 times 1 hundredth? And we just talked about that, didn't we? So, where is that? We know that it's equivalent because we can multiply these as if they're whole numbers, right? And then there's a one-tenth times a one-tenth, which is a one-hundredth. How do you know the equations are true? We know that I... Um, I use the equation 7 and 2 tenths times 5 and, th and 5 and 3 tenths and multiply 1 tenth times 1 tenth to get 1 hundredth. And I can multiply this out means I have 72 hundredths. So if I were to draw that, I'm sorry, 72 tenths. So if I were to draw that on the grid, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then two little ones, right? 
Over here on this grid, I would have one, two, three, four, five, and then three little ones. And then we could multiply those together, right? How can you use the equation to find 7 and 2 tenths times 5 and 3 tenths? So I can multiply this together, get that answer, and then make sure that the answer has hundredths in them, right? So whatever the answer is, I'm going to move that decimal place until it shows me two place values so that it's hundredths. All right. Find the value of each product. Okay, so again, I'm going to use that same strategy, and I'm going to say this is going to be 73 times 42 times, I have two place values there, right? So I'm going to make sure I have two place values here. Or I could write 73 times 42 times one-tenth, remember that's a tenth, times one-tenth. This equals this. Those two things are equal. All right, so let's find it. 73 times 42. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 7 is 14. Get rid of that 2. Add a 0. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 7 is 28. Plus 1 is 29. All right, so I got 3. Zero, six, six. I have two tenths or a hundredth, so I need to move that over here, right? Tenths, hundredths. Okay, I can do the same thing for number two. I can multiply 55 times 38, and you can do 38 times 55, but I always like to have the larger number on top. Five times eight is 40. Five times eight again is 40 plus four. 44. I'm done with that number and that number, and I bring a zero down. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 5 is 15. Plus 1 is 16. 9 and 10 and a 2. So again, I have 2090, and I would multiply that times how many place values are there? There's two, right? So a hundredth. So that means I'm going to have that decimal represents hundredths. So 2 o decimal, because I have two places right there, 9 o. And I don't even need to write that 9 there, do I? I don't even need to write that there. Okay, moving on to number 3. And I'll use a different color ink because my, my work is getting pretty messy. This time I have a three-digit number times a two-digit number. So again, I'm going to do 285 times 17, and I'll worry about the decimal at the end. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 8, 56, 57, 58, 59. 14 plus 5 will be 19. I'm done with the 7 and those numbers at the top add a 0. And then 1 times 285 is 285. Don't have to do much thinking there. There we go. 9 plus 5 is 14, 9, and that's going to be 9 because I'm going to put that here, right? So 9 and 9 is 18, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so I got 4, 8, 4, 5, and I'm noticing that this is the hundredths place, so I'm going to move that decimal two place values to get to that hundredths. It's like saying, taking this number and multiplying it times one hundredth. I would still get 48 and 45 hundredths. All right, let's talk about what they want to ask us next. How did you use your understanding of place value to find the products? I used the whole number of products and then remembered that I have that many hundredths, so I multiplied that product by one hundredth. How is the last product the same as the other products you have found, and how is it different? Well, let's rewrite those products down. For number one, I got 30 and 66 hundredths. The two, I got 20 
and 90 hundredths. And the last one I got 48 and 45 hundredths. But in that last one, we had a three-digit number, didn't we? We had 285 times 17 hundredths. So I think that's what they're asking. How is this different than the other ones? Well, it wasn't really. It also has a whole number and a decimal, and the decimal has tenths and hundredths. The whole number is bigger. I can use the same methods, right? Multiply 285 times 17, and then multiply that times 1 hundredth. The product is more complicated since it has one factor, um, three digit. One, fa one of the factors had three digits, but it's still the same. Okay, today we found products of whole numbers and decimals. How is finding products of whole numbers and decimals the same as finding products of whole numbers? How is it different? Well, I have to find the products of the digits in both cases. In whole numbers and decimals, I still have to multiply. I can use the same strategies for finding both of them. When there are decimals, I just need to remember that those whole number products of, of digits might be tenths or hundredths, right? I might have to make them tenths or hundredths. Okay, here are, here's our cool down. So explain why two and five tenths and six and four tenths times six and four tenths is the same as 25 times 64 times 100, right? Well, I can explain that by saying that this is 25 times 1 tenth times 64 times 1 tenth. And then I can rearrange that, right? 25 times 64 times 1 tenth times 1 tenth. And I know that this equals 1 hundredth. So I can rewrite it as 1 hundredth, couldn't I? And then we have to find the value. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say 64. Remember, I like the, top, the bigger value on top times 25. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 6 is 30 plus 2, 32. I'm done with the 5 and the 2, and I can bring down a 0. 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 6 is 12. And I add those up. 8, time, 8 plus 2 is 10, 5 plus 1 is 6, and 1. So I have 1,600, and I need to remind myself that I have to multiply that times hundredths. So it's really 1,600 hundredths. So that would be 16 hundredths like this, or I could write it as 16. All right, boys and girls, thank you for joining me on Lesson 21. I hope that you like and subscribe and that you join me again on Lesson 22.